So we're just broken people trying to reach broken people. Yeah. And the only way that's possible is being purified by God, being um, refined by the Lord and just talking about these issues openly. And who better to talk about it than a couple of young goofy dudes yeah. that go to college. So. What's up guys? As you can tell from the title of this video, we are gonna be talking about Hillsong, Hillsong College. All three of us, if you didn't know, currently are enrolled in Hillsong College USA. That's a little bit confusing right now. And I know that there's some misconceptions, there's some stories that are true and some that are a little bit exaggerated, just to be completely honest. Uh, we, this is gonna be an unbiased video, just to kind of clarify, like even though we do go to Hillsong College, this is completely unbiased. And we're just gonna tell the truth and call out the elephant in the room, but also like give you like some pretty positive feedback because like we've, I've been going to Hillsong College for a year and a half now. These guys have been there for a year. And so there's a lot of, really awesome things that like God has done through Hillsong College. I know in my life, uh, and I'm sure they can attest. We'll talk about it a little bit more, but just to kind of give you an idea of what this video is gonna be about. Yeah, how do we how do we want to start this introduction? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the introduction. Oh yeah, 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 introduce, introduce. <laughs> Go ahead, introduce yourself. You ain't been in a video. Oh, you have been in a video. Yeah, introduce yourself. That's a while ago. Um, I'm Angel, I'm one of the roommates here in this amazing house. Just finished up my first year at Hillsong College USA. Uh, it's been sick doing life with these guys and it's been amazing. So my name's Zach Moore. No. I've been going to... <laughs> my name... That's me. <laughs> my name's Steve. -O. I've been going to Hillsong College for like a year. Um, but I've been I've been living in AZ for about a little over a year, living with these guys. Um, Hillsong College has been great. We're gonna talk about it more, but yeah, one of the I'm best Zach decisions. Webb. Yeah, they they know that. So uh, just figured I'd. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start off just from the beginning. Uh, the controversy of West. which one <laughs> controversies <laughs> that have taken place in the last two years so recently our global pastor of Hillsong resigned because of some stuff and if you guys don't know or aren't aware of that uh, I think Hillsong has yeah they they detailed pretty much as much information that can be said publicly spoken about um on their, i think i think it's right. on their website actually yeah. um, which has been really cool having that transparency coming from a student but also even from a congregant you know things that need to be said mm -hmm. um right have been outlined with detail but also you know keeping things as private for all parties um because this is like you know the situations that we're facing are things that affect real people mm -hmm. and have you know, just been very difficult for a lot of people. So out of respect for each party, um, there is some privacy to it, I guess. But the transparency has been, yeah. you know, pretty great coming from our situation. I mean, given everything that's that's happened, I mean, it's it's, it's nothing new. Uh, and I just kind of wanted to point that out. It was just like, whenever everything broke out, like, yeah, there was a lot of emotions. There was a lot of disappointment, um, for sure. I didn't know Pastor Brian personally. It didn't really affect me as much as it did to like the trainers and the teachers here at Hillsong College obviously, and I can't imagine like what they were feeling. I, I know that I can come from an unbiased opinion because I just never really knew Brian. And I knew that he was a great leader and I knew that like God was definitely doing a lot through him, yeah. obviously, because yeah. he has a he, he helped build a worldwide church that has impacted so many people for the better. And so like, I just want to say that, like I forgive the guy. And unfortunately, when you're like that high up and you have that much influence and that much leadership, um, you, you you have to take it seriously and like little mm -hmm. things anything can yeah. tear you down the bigger you are the harder you fall and so i think that's just what happened but he's a normal dude and like i'm not gonna point fingers at him and bash him or anything because i think genuinely i think he loves jesus i think he's a great guy but unfortunately he made a few mistakes something i want to stress is like this isn't like college students feeling the need to defend yeah. yeah, it's more so like like not diminishing the mistake that was made, but also not being afraid to talk about the reality of the church, Big C Church and our local church. Yeah. And I think yeah. something that's important that we forget is like a lot of the letters to the church that Paul writ, like wrote were issues that they were dealing with yeah. that they needed to be comfortable talking about so that we can grow sure. and the church can be purified yeah. through the mistakes that were made and openly discussing it yeah and i think oftentimes like we as a church we just get used to sweeping things under the rug and oftentimes that's how 
things fester up and deeper issues than things that may have happened in the past or things like this may occur mm-hmm. because so many years go on where we don't have open discussions of how we can grow as a church and how we can grow as people because the reality of it is is that we're broken people being used by a perfect god yeah. trying to reach broken people so we're just broken people trying to reach broken people yeah and the only way that's possible is being purified by god being um refined by the lord and just talking about these issues openly and who better to talk about it than a couple young goofy dudes <laughs> that go to college so that's what this video yeah. is pretty much about. Yeah. Same thing goes for Carl Lentz. I know a lot of people. If you if you're clicking on this video, you you've you either never heard about anything that's going on. You live under a rock, um, or you've like investigated it. You've seen the Hillsong documentary that came out. I watched it. I don't know. Did you watch it at all? I never. You watched a little bit of it. So I watched it, and I knew that I could like sit through it because it's just. Like I'm, I'm unbiased, and so I'm open to hearing people out. But uh, there are some things that that are true. Unfortunately, you know, events with Carl and Brian are 100 percent true, uh, and it's unfortunate. But then I also want to point out that there's a lot of things that are kind of dramatized a little bit because the things that I was hearing, I have, I've never been to Hillsong, Sydney. I don't know what the college like is like there. I'm assuming that it's really good because of the leadership that's in Hillsong College USA. So I can only speak for the college in USA, but what was said in the documentary i have not experienced any of that at all like people taking advantage of like students or anything i can only speak for hillsong college usa like the leadership that i'm under here and the people that have invested into my life have treated me so well and have cared about me have loved me have lifted me up have challenged me uh and been real with me so yeah that's pretty much all i have to say about the documentary but um i mean i know you guys didn't watch it but do you have anything to say or i was just gonna say not to diminish anything that happened a lot of it is obviously true so that's not something that we would ever do my heart goes out to the victims but i hate i hate cancel culture yeah and that's something that the church should never adopt and that's my one issue with a lot of what i've seen not just in our church but in other churches where one thing happens and automatically people are written off when you know that we're dealing with sinners broken people just to go back to that And it's like, if God can call David, somebody who time and time again, fell and made mistakes, who, you know, murdered and cheated and all this stuff or whatever. If God can call David a man after his own heart and see him as that, how much more do we see leaders who clearly have anointing, but have made mistakes, not to give them that position again, to obviously hold them to a standard and remove them from that platform, but at the same time, give them grace as we've been given because help them. And, and allow them to at least be a member of the church that they once were leading, you know what I mean? Just things like that, or at least, at the very least, not write them off and give them the grace that we didn't deserve at all either. And so like, again, we're not defending. Hold them to a standard, hold our leaders to a standard. Absolutely. We should be walking in holiness, we should be walking in righteousness, but at the same time, giving grace where grace is needed. That's my thought. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, this whole idea of like accountability in the church, you know, it affects every single level of it. Um, I think this whole situation has brought into kind of our clear vision of, you know, nobody is like outside of the box of accountability and, you know, following whether it's code of conduct or just simple moral values, you know, things that are either written in paper or just planted on our heart. Like we have to hold it to a certain standard. And as pastors and as ha- as leaders in the church, you know, we're called to live above reproach and we're called to, yeah. you know, live a life worthy of, you know, representing not a church and not a name, but the name of Jesus and being able to effectively communicate and lead and shepherd. And, you know, moments like these bring into the light, like, you know, obviously nobody's perfect. Nobody is going to, you know, I guess be this perfect mold of what the church leaders are supposed to be, but it gives us a better idea of like, okay, maybe we overlooked a couple things or maybe we put too much faith in a certain leader. Um, And I feel like Phil and Lucinda as our new global senior pastors they've done a great job of truly like living a humble and authoritative life um as pastors that are stepping into this position in such you know chaotic yeah this climate that they're stepping into and i honor them because you know handling it with grace and and doing the things that they are and leading how they are and you know just being advocates for change because 
we understand as Hillsong College students and being a part of Hillsong Church, there is a level of influence that comes with that association. And we don't, we don't take that lightly no. because we know that if we are a part of something as almost attractive as, you know, uh, I guess you could say popular church or an influential church, we have to hold ourselves to a different level of accountability. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like Phil and Lucinda have done a great job of going from the top down of like, okay, things need to change. Things need to be refined by Jesus. And we need to be conduits of that change. Like we can't just sit idly by, like maybe we have been and be complacent yeah. with, well, we're, we're Hillsong Church. So, you know, we already have that mantle of influence, mantle mm -hmm. of leadership, but like understanding that there's more value to it than we realize and we have to, as students, as the new generation leaders, whether it is a part of Hillsong Church or any other church, not just about our church, it's about the Big C Church. Like we need to be conduits of change across the world with every local church and every single mission. And I think that, you know, with how Phil and Lucinda have stepped into this situation, have kind of shown us like, all right, now it's time to hit the ground running. Yeah. Like it's not time to be complacent anymore. So yeah. Yeah. I'm thankful for that for sure. One thing that I kept saying, and this is kind of like, I think this will be like the main point of the video, is uh, God is definitely in the past three or four years, he's like stripping away of a lot of like the pride yeah. and a mm -hmm. lot of the entitlement that comes with ministry. As, as much as we want to say, oh, like strip me of my pride, like I'm like, you know, I'm, like all of us, obviously we want to live our lives humbly and give that away when even whenever opportunity presents itself and something big happens and like we're experiencing a lot of you know blessing these pastors are experiencing the favor of the lord and a lot of blessing because they're just sowing unfortunately when our flesh comes into play you have to like you were saying immediately be like hey i need to talk to someone because yeah. like i'm feeling this way and i've I, we don't know what that feels like because we're not in giant leadership yeah. positions so i could never even explain to you what it would feel like to run a church but i know that god is like he's he's rebuilding he's rebuilding yeah. a lot yeah. and he's stripping away a lot of pride and i think the future for just church in general like wherever you are i think the future is extremely bright mm -hmm. and i think eyes are starting to open up and like the authenticity is coming back yeah. and like back to the basics type of thing yeah and uh, yeah, I know that whenever that happens is whenever the Holy Spirit is allowed to step in and work in partnership with ministries. That's the way that it should be through just authentic conversations and yeah. showing kids that are like us and younger, like what it really means to live in leadership and a godly lifestyle, but also be like authentic and human because we're all human. Uh, I know we've been talking a lot. We'll probably wrap it up. Uh, anything else to say? Yeah, I have a last thought. Um, something that I love about Hillsong is how much they value leadership, yeah. no matter the cost of it though. Yeah. So it's like, it's not, it's easy to say, I wanna be a leader be because you've seen the benefits of being a leader and you've seen the benefits of influence. But what I love about Hillsong is they always count the cost when it comes to influence and knowing that the weight of the influence that they have. And so like, when it comes to like leading, they are okay with, looking like a fool if it means that every other church in the world is going to be purified and yeah. make room for the ushering of revival in this yeah. in this nation and in this yeah. world so i think that as hillsong has always led and i say that humbly and I, and gratefully that i've been a part of this church yeah. as they've always led they will continue to lead even if it means pain even if it means mm -hmm. the purifying of their church even if it brings confusion and a lot of trials and a lot of tribulations they've counted the cost of the influence that they carry and i love that they're ready to take on whatever god wants to do in the church to make way for revival that's about to break out and i really think that god is purifying not only hillsong but every church in the world because he's raising up leaders like from a young age they are radicals like pockets of radicals that are being birthed and i think this is just a part of it god has always purified his people yeah. people that are willing to be used by him he's like okay and i'm going to purify you and then i'm going to raise you up and you're going to go out and salt the earth and i think that's something that hillsong has always done beautifully yeah. and this is just part of it absolutely and you know it goes without saying how grateful I am for this church. I mean, being a part of it for the past yeah. three years of my life, you know, in Orange County and then now here uh, in college and, you know, just the way that they have kind of opened my eyes more so to a bigger and broader picture of what the body of Christ looks like, you know, having people of all walks and all maturities in their faith. And, mm -hmm. you know, cause I'll meet people who are, who are just now coming into 
you know, relationship with Jesus or even just their first encounter with Jesus. And then I meet guys like, you know, Zach and Steve-O who, you know, they've been walking this life for a little while. And so that in itself sharpens myself. Being able to be exposed to the different levels of maturity, I guess that's the word I'm gonna go with, spiritual maturity mm -hmm. in itself, really shows that, you know, you don't have to be a certain way. You don't have to know certain things. You don't have to, you know, be scripturally, you know, profound in any certain way. Like just literally come as you are and you're welcome here. And I felt that certainly when I walked through those doors the first time. And, you know, the leadership that we have at college is in a level of itself. You know, they kind of stand above any other leaders that I feel like I've had or, mm -hmm. you know, they, They've been incredible and I've had some amazing leaders in my life and pastors who have mentored me and they just, they teach from their heart. They teach from what the spirit is doing and you know, what we want to be a part of is a better church mm -hmm. essentially. And so, you know, I'm so grateful for this church and I feel like I can speak for all of us in saying, you know, we're committed to, you know, being a part of the revival of this church mm -hmm. and being yeah. a part of the restructuring and the, you know, reconstruction essentially of what this church is supposed to be mm -hmm. all along yeah, from sure. the beginning. So, you know, we're ready for it. We've been, you know, mindlessly prepping. We've been, yeah. we've been in, in the throne room every yeah. single day like praying fervently about this whole situation from the moment it started and we're just we're ready for it we're equipped mm -hmm. and yeah. we're stronger than ever i feel absolutely all right well if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed go ahead and subscribe we're gonna be grinding out a lot of content this summer yeah. um and we're gonna get a really nice setup as you can see we bought this beautiful sheet and Sheets. it's literally like a bed sheet and, 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 and just put it here. put so. it on our countertop <laughs> so we're really professional better. but yeah no we're, the videos the quality is going to get better um we're going to have a lot of topics we're going to talk about we're going to be doing vlogs and stuff so if you're not subscribed go ahead and like this video subscribe and i think that's pretty much it for this video yeah. if you have any questions leave them in the comments maybe yes. we can make more videos about it if you guys are really um concerned and, but uh yeah thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah. yeah. Peace.